The first one, and the one that's, uh, that I want to show you about, is ammonia gas, where you can actually gas wood and make it change color with ammonia. And that is something that happened, oh, back in 1700s or so. I'm not sure about the dates, but uh, somebody built a barn, built it out of white oak. I think it was in England somewhere. And then the animals came in in the winter and they uh, did what animals do in barns, which uh, is pretty obvious and ammonia gas was formed and that gas was so concentrated with all the animals in there that all the white oak around where the animals were turned a nice brown dark brown color and they looked at it and thought wow what's the deal here so they did some experimenting and figured some things out and they found out that ammonia gas strong ammonia gas will change the color of white oak well further testing they realized it's tannic acid in the white oak or tannins in the, in the wood that change color when ammonia is applied to it. So um, people uh, st started marketing that. Uh, Gustav Stickley particularly, when he brought uh, the, America, the arts and crafts movement to America and he started selling furniture that was white oak, that was mission style, craftsman style, uh, he marketed the fact that he was using ammonia to stain it. Now the fact is, the guys in the factory worked all week, made all this furniture, and then on the weekend they put everything in one room, put this real strong ammonia out in the room, sealed everything up, and then they came back Monday morning and it was already stained. And they had a little touch-up to do and some stuff like that, but what a great way to, to magically stain wood and uh, without a lot of labor. So uh, Gustav Stickley was a master at marketing, and he used that and marketed that and told people in his sales brochures about this special way they're using to color the wood for their for your furniture that it won't fade and it, and it really is uh, deep it, it stains deep into the wood so uh, I'm selling arts and crafts furniture and I'm doing stickly stuff and we're using white oak so I thought well let's do some of this and find out about it so I got into it and learned about it now uh, this is the ammonia right here in a gallon of this this is 26% ammonia. This is not uh, Little Bo Peep at the grocery store. That's about 3%, I believe. This is 26%. This ammonia is so strong that uh, if you got a good whiff of it, you'd probably pass out. Uh, I, what we do in class is what I used to do. I quit doing it because it's just it's too dangerous. But um, we would take a little aquarium or a small plastic tank that had a lid and we'll put a bowl in there and put some wood samples in there. And that's how I made all these samples right here. So, uh, um, and these, I'm going to explain what these different ones are and show you how they did it. I also quickly realized that I need to add my own tannic acid to speed it up because we don't have six days or two whole days just to wait on it to, to do its action. So you can purchase, if you're going to get into it, you're going to, you can purchase tannic acid in a powder form. It looks like this, and uh, it looks like, really looks like sawdust, but this is, and it's not expensive. It's, this was a whole pound, and uh, I mix it with water and make a, uh, a saturated solution. And this, this is the tannic acid that settled out, and this is the solution on top right here. So... Uh, and it just goes on like water, raises the grain, and then, but you can't tell it a piece afterwards. It, it doesn't really color the wood. It just puts that tannic acid in there. And then when you, um, when, when you put it in the tank, then the action happens a lot quicker, 10 times as fast practically. So uh, it's definitely worth getting the tannic acid because, you know, a piece of furniture might have wood from three or four different trees and some of those might have a lot of tannic acid, some might not have very much. So if you add your tannic acid, then the color is going to come out a lot more uniform. Um, so let me show you these examples uh, that I've got down here. This one right here, uh, this one was in tannic acid. I tannic acid it at first, just painted it on and let it dry and then put it in the tank. And uh, it was in the tank for 89 hours and it turned almost black. And then uh, this one here, as an example, this one was in only six hours. So that one's a nice golden brown color. Uh, here's a piece of birch, and I put tannic acid on this side, and I didn't put anything on there and put the whole thing in the tank. And it was in there for 24 hours in a small tank. And so you see the difference between tannic acid and no tannic acid on birch. 
Uh, it's not quite as drastic on white oak because white oak has tannic acid in it. Birch doesn't have much in it. Here's a piece. This was uh, had pre-treatment with tannic acid and it was in the tank 24 hours. This one here was in the tank uh, 31 hours after treating it with tannic acid. I like that color real well right there. Uh, this here, this shows what, this was in tannic, was treated on tannic acid on one side and no tannic acid on the other side. And this is just what it looks like when it came right out of the tank. It's got kind of a greenish tint to it. Uh, and that doesn't have any shellac on it. All these have been shellacked or lacquered or some kind of top coat put on them to bring the color out. Uh, this one here is four hours, fumed for four hours in tannic acid. And here's the one, this one was six days with no tannic acid. So if you see that, that's no tannic acid, six whole days. So, you, and this was 89 hours uh, with tannic acid. So you can make a comparison there. Now this board right here uh, was cut off afterwards, and you can see how deep the color penetrated into the wood on that end. Uh, so that's an interesting thing to look at. Uh, that was in there six days with no tannic acid. So. Uh, these are all examples to kind of show you a little bit about uh, how the ammonia works and you can decide whether you want to get into it or not. Now when I do this, um, I put on goggles, I put on a, a respirator, I put on uh, long sleeves and I'll wear an apron. I'll put on a hazmat suit basically and that's really what you need to do because if you spill a drop of this liquid right here and gets in your eye, you're blind forever. You'll never see out of that eye again. That's enough right there for me not to use it. But uh, if you like to live dangerously, hey, go for it. It's free country. It's hard to get too. This this strong ammonia. I mean, it, you know, you you can't just go to the local hardware store and have them order it for you. You got to go to a chemical supply house, and uh, they'll charge you. I think it's about 50 bucks for a gallon of it. But it's uh, if you want to be true, authentic with uh, arts and crafts. Uh, that's one way to do it. However, with dye stains, which we're going to do in a little bit, uh, you can make just about any wood about any color with just mixing powder with hot water and adding a little soap. And we'll talk about that later.